Hi there, and welcome to this video series, Revit to IFC, an export guide. In this video series, we'll look at correctly exporting Revit models, specifically architectural models, to IFC 4. Often, I see in practice, IFC models exported from Revit with little or no thought gone into the export process, specifically what information is exported and what its intended use is. IFC data model, or schema, has a particular structure with entities, attributes and properties that need correctly assigning in order to ensure compliance. Hopefully these videos will shed some light on exporting models correctly from Revit to IFC. This series is aimed at designers and contractors in order to assist with exchanging models through IFC particularly when developing exchange requirements. I do not consider myself an expert in IFC, nor a data scientist or computer programmer, so comments and feedback are greatly appreciated. My day-to-day -day role is as a BIM coordinator for an architectural practice in the UK. However, I often see IFC improperly implemented when exchanging IFC files on projects, so hopefully this should assist in improving the quality of models exchanged between organizations. Firstly, I wish to express my thanks to a number of industry experts that have assisted me in my professional journey so far. Rob Jackson and Emma Hooper at Bond Brian Digital, who have an excellent blog on all things IFC and Open BIM. Kevin Fielding at Shepherd Robson Architects. And Hale Velez a senior principal engineer at Autodesk, developing the IFC functionality within Revit. And there are additional online resources that can be found in the description below, along with links to resources from the above named individuals. Firstly, a quick description of my setup. I'll be using Revit LT 2022. However, the same functionality and processes would be used for Revit 2022 the full version. I will be using version 22.1.0.0 of the IFC exporter for Revit, available from Autodesk App Store or GitHub, and it is the latest available at the time of recording. Depending on when these videos are viewed may depend on the validity of the functionality and features as these are being regularly updated. Because of the vast nature of IFC and all its constituent aspects, I will go through the principles and not necessarily every single item. For example, every single IFC property and quantity for IFC spaces. If I just Google Revit IFC GitHub, the exporters for IFC 2019 and beyond, can be found in the release page on the Revit IFC GitHub. They can also be found often at a later date on the IFC App Store. So here is the exporter for IFC 2021, which can be downloaded from this Autodesk App Store. I will also be using two free IFC viewers to review the exported IFC files, DDS CAD Viewer and BIM Collab Zoom. DDS CAD may not be the IFC viewing software of choice, especially for architects, but I found it most clearly visualizes the IFC structure and data. I found inconsistencies in the data displayed between numerous IFC viewers, so require these two in order to accurately demonstrate the exported data. A little bit about IFC, or Industry Foundation Classes. IFC is a standardised digital description of the built environment, including buildings and civil infrastructure. It is an open and international standard defined by ISO 16739 and it allows for model authors to export their native models, be that from Revit, Vectorworks, Tecla, to a software agnostic version of the model 
for further uses, such as referencing into other software for analysis, simulation, and clash detection. It is a standardized data model that describes the identity, attributes, characteristics, and relationships of objects. More information can be found at the Building Smart website. All things or entities in IFC are represented by a class, and these classes are prefixed by IFC, such as IFC Project, IFC Site, IFC Beam, and IFC Door. These classes are then layered into a hierarchical tree with each subclass following on from the superclass above. So here we have the progression from IFC root to IFC beam through the different classes. Each class then has a specific set of attributes. Each attribute contains a specific piece of information about that particular entity. All building elements are subclasses of IFC root, and IFC root has four main primary attributes, including the name and description attributes. Each subclass then inherits the attributes for each superclass above it in the tree. For example, here we see the entity IFC beam. IFC root is the highest level of class with the IFC root attributes and then each of the additional classes down the tree have their own set of attributes until we get down to IFC beam. Entities can also be assigned properties which are assigned through property sets or P sets and quantities, which are assigned through quantity sets or QTOs. An individual instance of an entity is called an occurrence, such as a door, and occurrences may also have a corresponding object type that shares common features such as naming, properties, and geometric representation, such as a door type sharing common properties, which would be an IFC door type. Object types and occurrences have an attribute called predefined type that is used to further differentiate objects and has a predetermined list or enumeration of variations. Properties and property sets can be applied to either the individual object, so the occurrence, or the object type, all occurrences of that particular object type. This may seem confusing, but hopefully as we progress through this video series, the concepts will become a little clearer. These videos are guidance on how to set up your Revit content to ensure your Revit files comply with IFC once exported. They are not necessarily requirements that you should fulfill whenever exchanging IFC files. Always adapt the processes to suit each project, and there is no need to provide information in a particular format beyond that which is necessary on the project. Now let's go to the IFC4 documentation website for a brief navigation so we can become a little more familiar. In Google, I'm going to search for IFC4 documentation and I will select this first result, IFC4 documentation. So this is the documentation page for IFC4, technical corrigendum 1 of addendum 2. There is a cover, contents, a foreword, introduction, etc., which I suggest you review at your leisure. If I go to inheritance listings, this is a list of all the classes and their inheritances through the IFC schema. If I select all entities, I can scroll down. If 
and here is IFC root, and then beneath IFC root are all the subclasses going all the way down to elements such as IFC door. If I select on IFC door, there is a change log through the different versions of IFC, an entity definition and semantic definitions, The attribute definitions are the specific attributes that are associated to an IFC door entity, including the type of attribute. So for example, the free predefined type attribute of a door should be from a list of the door type enumerations, which are door, gate, trap door, user defined or not defined with additional descriptions against each and the predefined type can be associated to an IFC door and IFC door type object. If I go back we have the entity inheritance from IFC root through object definition, object product element and building element. If I select attribute inheritance these are all the attributes that are inherited through the entities. So we have the base name and description attributes that we'll look at a lot in the course of this video series. The object type and then further down to the entities associated to the IFC doors. There are additional concept usage object typing, so how the door relates to a IFC door type, and then also the property sets for this particular IFC door class. So there is a property set called PSET door common with a number of properties contained within. And additionally there are quantity sets that can be selected to review particular quantities. So it's worth having a brief look through the IFC4 documentation to become aware of the attributes and properties for particular elements. Right, now we've gone through this introduction, let's head into Revit and set up our model to export to IFC.